Well, we've learned a lot over the years, and I think it's important that we use a sustainable approach to infrastructure because we know now the harm that the carbon emissions do to the environment, and we know that some of these massive gray projects use a lot of energy that's generated in a way that releases that carbon to the atmosphere, and so it's important to us wherever we can to limit our impact as humans on this planet. And infrastructure is a big part of what we do. And if all of us can think differently about how to make that infrastructure more sustainable, more environmentally friendly, it'll be better for all of us. I can give you some examples of how we've seen a reversal of that not in my backyard. Historically, the problem with the combined sewer for overflows is in our urban area, and we've always designed gray regional treatment facilities with traditional pumps and uh, you know pipes, and we've focused on how to handle this after it's made its way into the system. What we're doing now is trying to keep some of that rainwater out of the system. We refer to our program as a Save the Rain program, and when we redo a street, instead of doing it in the traditional way, we've put medians with landscaping in them to try to make the water slow down. Instead of everything being a hard surface, we have some beautiful landscaping. And we've seen communities ask us to do their streets in that way, rather than um, you know paving the roads the way they've always been paved, make everything hard and the water runs quickly. We're trying to make the ground more soft, make the ground a little bit more like a sponge, return the rainwater to the water table in a more natural way. But those are engineered solutions, and we've never had people calling up county government and saying, can you do an engineering project? You know, can you do an infrastructure project in my neighborhood? But we had it to the extent that our county legislature had to create a whole new program of suburban green infrastructure because of the demand for those kinds of projects in people's neighborhoods. And I don't think you'll find very many examples of government infrastructure projects that people have begged to have happen on their streets. From my perspective, as a county government official that works side by side with engineers putting the projects together that we do, I would encourage engineers to be both the technical expertise that we need and the leadership that we need. Because we don't know, most of us in government, what we don't know. We don't know what the options are, we don't know what the risks are, and we don't have the experience with implementing these infrastructure programs that engineers have. I would say on a very basic level, I know what I want. I know what I see that I like, but I need an engineer to tell me how to get from my idea to a project in the ground. My experience with a lot of engineers is they listen to what I want, they design what I want, and they help me implement what I want without ever saying, I'm not sure that's exactly what you want. And I think that's where the leadership comes in. And I would encourage engineers to speak up because you have an expertise that can make what we want much better. You know, we don't know what we don't know. And really speaking up and saying, have you considered this? Have you considered that? If we get all the way back to my idea and that's what you're designing, no harm, no foul. But my guess is in most of these instances that a leadership role on the part of the engineers can make this a lot better for all of us.